Hey guys, it's Fallen Dice, and uh, I'm revisiting my kiln to try and make a, I guess we'll call it a tutorial. Um, the walkthrough, well, when I initially made it, thought it was pretty self-explanatory. When I went back, as uh, someone had asked me some questions about it, when I went back and looked at it and realized that there was a whole bunch of other stuff that was kind of in here that really wasn't part of the kiln, it was just part of my experimenting, I realized that it actually was probably a little bit harder to follow than I had initially intended it compared to like my pottery one. So I am recreating it but I'm gonna do it with just the bare necessities. So the first part of the tutorial is the bellows and getting getting the timing for that because um, part the power for everything over there had come from over here and I never really kind of went into it so we'll go into it over here uh, got a water wheel powering this line uh, it also goes underneath to power this um, turntable which is set on two and it has a torch going around so every fourth turn it'll power this line and it'll shut off the power or the mechanical power here which will allow the bellows to pump back up and this is what's required to be able to uh, stoke your fire and uh, stoked fire is required for pottery so bef I just wanted to show this part before I cover this all up um, to move on with the next part of my tutorial alright so on to the next part I filled this in a little bit um, the obvious part next would be this is the four required blocks for a kiln the basically the pottery needs to be surrounded on all four sides um, front and back don't matter and it needs to be over the fire so right now the fire is not stoked I have the power turned off just because it's kind of <laughs> harder to work when it's flaming like that so that being there I then go ahead and add these just because I'm not really a huge fan of all the fire going out and then we'll we'll close that up as well just to give it a nice uniform look The next item that we'll need is our dispenser block. Our block dispenser. And that is going to go over here. And that'll be putting our blocks down here to be fired. Let me grab some more bricks. Not that they're required, but. put this out to the side here and we'll be needing a couple of our sticky pistons yeah, I'll pick those up later one thing I wish they had more of in build craft is <laughs> spots for inventory items that you're actually using all right so here is the basis behind how this system works um, again with before everything else is in here this is all going to be set to fire in order. So the first thing that'll get power is going to be this dispenser, or not dispenser, this sticky piston here, and it will push both of these blocks over. Um, once these blocks are in here, any item which is not an actual block, which is what happens to the pottery once it's being done being fired, it just becomes laying in there, gets pushed out into our water stream, which is going to be right here. Um, after delay, this piston will fire, and it's going to push these two blocks back, and as this is a sticky piston, it'll pull that one block back, leaving this hole here. And then after both of those happen, the block dispenser will then dispense another piece of unfired pottery over here, which can then start cooking. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and set up the wiring. I'm going to do that ahead of time, and then we'll just kind of walk it through. Alright, so we got some initial setup here. This is uh, the way the platform is set up to allow everything to fit in. Again, according to how I did it over there. Um, once you kind of have the understanding, you can make this fit however you need to where you're putting it. Uh, the next important part is we need a turntable right here, which is going to be powering our timing circuits over there. So what I do is I'm going to take over here, and we're going to tap off of that. 
Let me go ahead and pull up my axles again. Set these up here. Uh, probably. Wish there was a way to see the direction other than <laughs> when you're actually facing it. Alright. Pop one more block just to get out. Alright. And we'll bring this up to the surface. Alrighty. Did I have two on there? Yeah, it was because of the height. So with that, I won't need that. Okay, good. You know, it's always funny when you go back and remake something later on. Y you notice the little things that you maybe not necessarily did wrong, but could have done better. So it's always kind of fun to revisit something. So we'll go back here. We'll grab our turntable again. Set him there. And we'll set him there. All right, let me go set up some more wiring, and I'll be right back. All right, first part of our timing circuit is going to be over here. So we have our turntable. It's at the, the basic setting, so it's on the fastest possible setting. Every time this redstone torch comes around and hits this, it's going to power this, which will power our block. At the same time, it's also going to come over here and power this repeater. When the block dispenses blocks, if it's a full block, it will be powered. And having, say, redstone here, this will now be powered redstone. If it is a half slab, it's considered a transparent block, and it will not uh, be powered. So you are then able to use this as a timing circuit. Each time it goes around, puts out a half slab. You know, that's time, you know, you, you choose how many half slabs you want to put out for the timing of your circuit. I'm going to come over here, because I don't remember off the top of my head exactly how many it was. And it was four half slabs, and I only really need to have one in there. Go ahead and toss that. Alrighty. Now if I go over and power this. Just like going around, there's our first half slab. Second half slab. Third fourth and then finally we get the full slab and that will power this um, you will notice that every it'll go four four turns at normal speed and then it'll hesitate and that hesitation is of course because of this since we're using the same line over here that's getting that delay it also delays over here you could run a separate line before the delay I just don't know what the timing would be because when I when I designed this initially it was designed with that timing so it really doesn't make a huge difference how you do it. Um, the next part of our circuit, once this is powered here, and we're using repeaters just to prevent crossover from the signal, is we're going to come over here and power that first uh, first piston. And this is kind of a funny how this works. It treats the piston as a transparent block so it's able to come up and around but being that it's here it's also able to power that block so when we get that first uh, or that the full block comes over here it and it comes around it will power the redstone here which powers our piston and it will push those two blocks over and then it'll retract take the one block with it and leave this block in front of the the, uh, the, dis the block dispenser all right, so as we said, the path uh, the path comes up here, powering the piston, but it continues on over here. Uh, I have two repeaters; they can kind of be placed placed anywhere. Um, the first two are set to full delay. Um, this one here is just a uh, note or the single delay, no no extra ticks on it, as well as the one over there. Uh, you can set it up however you want, just as long as you make sure the power makes it all the way up and around. Uh, and I also drop this down just to make it easier to not have the power of these two connect but as you see it comes over here into this repeater which then powers this uh, piston so as we stand back and watch um, our half slabs up oh, there's a full slab and there you go and you see how it pushed the f two over there 
pulls one back, then this one pulls it back. So now the only thing we have left to do is our final delay, which and our final path, which is going into here, and that'll ca cause it to uh, dispense a piece of unfired pottery each time after this this whole sequence takes place. Alright, so our final path, and it goes off the same signal as the one going to our second piston, comes over here, and using a repeater, it's going into this block with a redstone torch to invert it. Um, the reason why we invert it is because we want the block dispenser to be powered on a regular basis. Um, when the circuit happens, it actually unpowers it, and with the delay here, it unpowers it only long enough for this piston to push out and retract. Because if it pushes out while it's powered, it'll actually suck the uh, brick in. Of course, brick in the kiln because you're no longer surrounded on the four sides by bricks. Um, once it retracts and the signal goes away, uh, it repowers it. And when it repowers it with nothing in front, it then places a piece of unfired pottery. So now as we come over here, we can see it's already working. Um, it put out the unfired pottery. We'll watch our timing circuit there. Uh, it should, shouldn't take much longer. Probably be firing right there it goes. There's our thing. And it drops it right out. So this, I hope, is a lot uh, simpler to understand than initially with all the extra stuff that I had um, attached to it. And the way I have it set up here is not how you have to have it set up. You can use whatever space you want behind to um, put the power in. Like in my actual world, instead of how I have it coming up here, the uh, path for this piston comes directly into it right like that. And with a separate signal going around. And then, of course, if you do something along the lines of this... You can then place some water right here. And I would suggest probably doing something along the lines of this as well, just so that when it pops out, it's forced to kind of come down here. Um, the only issue I have had with this is there are occasions when a piece of pottery, like, doesn't, for some reason, doesn't fall all the way off. Or maybe it pushes it over to here, and if you're not hanging around, you might might lose it. Um, I'd look. I'd, I'd let it run for a little bit, kind of see how it is. You know, you can always put glass panes across the front here to prevent anything from landing on this side. Like there you go. That was what I was talking about right there. Um, or if you, you know, if you're not doing anything, you can always just kind of stand right here. So if anything were to accidentally kind of get hung up right over there, um, it just pop into your inventory. It doesn't happen often, and I don't think it'd be a lot of a lot of. The only other issue that you might come across is every now and then, if somehow the circuitry gets kind of goofed up, uh, one of these pistons might push the other piston out. And if that were to happen, then obviously you would no longer have the four sides to your kiln, and it'll stop cooking, and it'll... Yeah, the system won't work anymore. Um, you can make it impossible for that to happen by putting enough blocks behind each one of these so that even if the timing were messed up, they it's too far to push the blocks but it doesn't happen that often and since I put it in the one downstairs I hadn't seen it happen but it it just to know it is something that could happen um, but again it's definitely preventable. alright well hopefully I answered all your questions if you have any further ones please feel free to comment and I will do my best to help you out um, as well as rate and subscribe I do a fun LP if you haven't already seen um, doing dealing mostly with better than build craft uh, so subscribe to be notified of uh, any future comment content that I might put out and like this if you enjoyed it um, thanks for watching and I will see you next time